Greetings, members one and all of the Salivation Nation. Understanding premiums tied to silver. That's the topic of this video, and it's a foundational understanding of these premiums, which will help us to better get a grasp on uh, how and why we pay the prices we pay above the spot price. And that's something that we have to really uh, stop and consider. We have to put ourselves in a myriad of different categories in order to fully grasp and, uh, and understand the premiums we pay. Because what one person pays for a premium on silver will vary greatly from another person as to whether it's acceptable or collectible. So let's explore these different options and uh, let's come to a better understanding of premiums tied with silver. Before we really get into the premiums themselves, we first have to define what is our purpose in accumulating silver. Now, for most of us, it is to preserve our wealth. It is to uh, essentially provide a savings account as a hedge against economic instability, which, by the way, can both include deflation and inflationary periods. Times where there's problems or stress in the markets, uh, people tend to move towards gold and silver as safe havens. And uh, silver, the more volatile of the two metals, has quite a history for sure. Its price fluctuations from anomalies uh, such as you know the 1980 Hunt Brothers and the 2011 price spikes, you know both of those were unusual circumstances where the price of silver went way high. But for the most part, silver has pretty much kept up with inflation. So it's a savings account. It's a way to really preserve our wealth in the end. And uh, that's kind of the foundation for accumulating precious metals. Now, both collectors and stackers can use that same philosophy and uh, reasons for buying silver. But they both have very different uh, tolerances with regards to premiums tied to silver. And there are as, as much of the variety that you see here before you of the types of silver that are out there, such as is the variety of the premiums you will pay on the silver that you see before you. You know, you can pay very little premium over spot price for a generic or a name brand. Really, these are name brand silver bars here. Um, but you pay very low premium over spot price for them. And these are examples of, uh, of ways to accumulate a lot of weight for a little bit over spot price. And by the way, that is your closest uh, realm to spot price you will get as generic uh, pieces that you, we showed there uh, for those prices over spot. A generic silver in the form of rounds or uh, bars are the, the, uh, the, the way to accumulate a lot of weight with a little money over spot. But understanding spot price is important too because you can, you can spend a lot of money and, and accumulate a lot of ounces of generic silver. And in the end, uh, you may lose money on the premiums. In other words, you may accumulate uh, several bars at... 39 cents over spot price per ounce, and then that spot price may be $30, and within two years it drops almost in half. Well, you've lost a lot of money. However, if you buy a premium silver product with, um, with a higher premium tied to above spot price at the right time, uh, you can come out ahead. So there's a lot of timing uh, that goes into buying silver. And people can be jaded fairly quickly depending on where that is. So that's why sometimes the, the premiums tied to them don't matter quite as much depending on what the markets do. But typically people are concerned about buying at spot price or close to over spot. And uh, it only becomes really a problem for those who are stackers out there, the pure stackers, when they buy 
particular premium bullion pieces. Now let's talk a little bit about premiums tied to more common or what's known as a, a recognized bullion coins. These are government-issued pieces that you can buy from um, uh, World Mints, and uh, they have typically a, a particular amount over spot price, which is higher than generic. But it, they're highly liquid pieces. Some of them can actually be semi-collectible, such as the case here in the Kookaburras. You know, these can be uh, collectible and uh, be able to demand a premium for long after they're sold. It just depends on the piece. Um, but nonetheless, they're, they're highly liquid. They're highly recognizable. So most people would uh, argue that it is worth those premiums to pay, to pay. And for most of us, they're acceptable premiums, even for stackers, because of their liquidity and their recognizability in the marketplace. Now, the next level uh, is a bit more difficult to swallow. And that is for pieces that are considered generic bullion, but uh, specialized. And, um, you know, they have a little bit more uh, involved in them. So the premiums tend to be a bit higher than even the government-issued bullion pieces, like high-relief private rounds, such as you see there. Um, here's another example. And uh, there's uh, other fine examples out there. Here's another example of a very high relatively high premium but a very well struck privately issued piece that has some collectability associated with it but is not associated with any mint and uh, pieces like this and uh, some are more popular than others um, and are more widely minted others are more less minted like some of these privately issued rounds that um, you know that can be released and there's a lot of that stuff out there that you may pay a premium for that does not mean you're going to get that premium back at the time to sell. You're getting into the realm of collectability with pieces like this um, that, uh, that you basically buy because you enjoy understanding that the premium, uh, the somewhat larger premium that, that, that you would buy above the spot price, you may not see a return on, but you buy it because you enjoy it. There are other types of silver out there, such as premium poured silver, <clears throat> and struck bars that are quite uh, sought after in certain collectors out there in the community. And there's other pieces that have done well. And then there's other pieces such as older silver coins that are in decent shape. Classic numismatics that people collect. And the silver content is uh, merely just a, uh, uh, just so happens to be just what the coin is. And it's not nearly as much of a concern. There's some very high premium collector low mintage pieces that are out there uh, that, that as well can command quite a premium that many of the stackers frown upon uh, because of the enormous price above spot. Uh, but the collectability of such pieces where you do have such high premium uh, but relatively low mintage are for the pure collectors out there. In cases like this, spot price is, uh, is, is really a, a non-issue. It really doesn't play any part of it. They want it to be silver because of the quality and because they think that a, a highly collectible coin such as this will, um, should be made of silver. Uh, but nonetheless, when you account for the premiums tied to a piece of, uh, of silver in that regard, it is uh, pretty much known that these are a very limited market. People who buy those particular coins and pieces, highly collectible, highly decorative, artistic, very well struck, proof type coins, those people are buying it for the collectability of the art and understand that more than likely it's going to be very difficult to get the price back out of it that you paid into it unless you can tap into a market that... Uh, uh, where there is demand for such pieces. And that is the thing about understanding premiums. Anything above silver price, uh, the spot silver price, in the end, really, if you want to sell it quickly, take collectability out of it, take all of the different examples that I showed you out of it, no matter the rarity or whatever, uh, really, you can only expect to get the spot price for it.
uh, in the end. When you think about being able to liquidate something quickly, that is the key. The silver value, the intrinsic value of the metal contained therein is the key. Uh, that, that is why most collectors out there in some ways can be considered stackers because they know that at the very least they're preserving their wealth uh, with the value of the silver contained in the pieces. Um, and, uh, but mostly these collector pieces do well or if there's a market for them, and uh, sometime either in the immediate time after release, there's some speculation that can go on in the markets. They can preserve their price um, and even gain in price and value. Uh, but there's other times where they will not. It's a gamble. So if you understand that premium and understand that the higher the premium, the greater the risk, and the more that these collectible, highly collectible coins that they produce – the more the market gets saturated and has a chance to be lost. Uh, you know, like for instance, this particular piece here, we don't see much discussion on these, um, even though this is not considered high premium. Uh, it's one of those things that um, um, it's, uh, it's the premium is high enough, but people forget about these particular coins after a while after they've been released. And how many of you have seen this particular uh, silver piece? Um, there's older pieces that people have forgotten about. And so what happens is they get relegated into the the generic silver bins, and uh, and and they're sold for a, a very small amount over spot price. So those are the things that you have to consider whenever you're purchasing silver: is these premiums and understand what you're buying, understand the collectability, understand the liquidity. And, uh, and be able to appreciate it. And, uh, and that's really uh, what it's about. And so if you think about it, to sum up in this video, it's about uh, the low premium silver, which is generic, and then the, the with some with a moderate level of premium to them, that is the highly liquid government-issued uh, and government-backed bullion pieces, there is the semi-collectible pieces that uh, can kind of make their way into both categories. Um, and then there's the highly collectible pieces that have a high premium, low mintage, high premium collector silver out there. So which category, which category would you consider yourself to be in? I would venture to say that a lot of this would probably span multiple categories. There are purists out there who just stack weight. Um, as low as possible over spot price. There's others that like to like a variety of, uh, of liquid uh, premium silver products. And there's others of us who are collectors who we really don't care what the premium is depending on the type of coin. If we like it, we'll buy it. And, um, and uh, that's how we accumulate silver. So I hope this helped you to get a better understanding of silver premiums. Post your thoughts below. I would like to extend a multitude of gratitude to you all for watching and encourage you to please rate, share, comment, and subscribe.